Okay, in this video, we're going to use our knowledge of common arcs, and we're going to do some work with coterminal arcs and also least positive coterminal arcs. So let's start with a circle. We always start with a circle. So there's my circle right there, and just kind of divide it up here. Pretend that's in the center. This is zero, and remember that's the positive direction. So here's an example. I have an arc length of 9 pi over 4. This equals my arc length. That means somebody started at 0 and walked around and maybe around again. They, they walked a total distance of 9 pi over 4. We want to know its coterminal arc. In other words, we want to know where they ended up on the unit circle. So because this is in fourths, um, I can think of pi over here as 4 pi over 4. I can think of 2 pi here as 8 pi over 4. So th that gives you some perspective here because it's in quarters. Well, because this person walked or traveled 9 pi over 4, 9 pi over 4 is greater than 8 pi over 4, so they definitely walked around um, more than once. So this is how you figure figure something like this out, even though this is kind of simple and kind of intuitive, they aren't always simple and intuitive. So you take your 9 pi over 4, and because you know it's greater than 2 pi, you then want to subtract 2 pi. But I don't want to just say 2 pi, because I have fractions, and in order to subtract I need a common denominator. So rather than say 2 pi, I'm going to say 8 pi over 4, which is the same thing. And when you subtract fractions, you subtract the numerators. So 9 minus 8 is 1. So I have a 1 pi over 4, which of course you know is pi over 4. So that's right here. So you can say that the coterminal arc for 9 pi over 4 is the same as pi over 4. Those are coterminal arcs. And then uh, a question might also ask you, what quadrant are you in? Well, after you do this, then you can see you're in quadrant one, so you can just use a Q, Q for quadrant. You're in quadrant one. Let's do a another example. All right, so here's an example where I've got negative 11 pi over three. I want to know its least positive coterminal arc. In other words, I want, when I'm done, my terminal arc to be positive. And I'll always start with a circle. The circle just gives you a great picture of what's going on. Always start right here at zero, but it's negative, so somebody went in this direction. So because the denominator is thirds, when you go all the way around and you've gone 2 pi, that's the same as 6 pi over so somebody's walked around or traveled the distance in the negative direction at least once around. Oop, I'm going to put a negative there because we're talking about negative direction. Because negative 11 pi over 3 is greater than negative 6 pi over 3. And maybe they went again. Um, and so this is the same as, let's do it this way, this is the same as 2 pi. Well, if you went around even a third time, that would be... 4 pi, and that's the same as a negative 12 pi over 3. Those things are equivalent. So somebody went around at least once, but not quite twice. All right, so let's, let's uh, look at how we figure that out. So you start with your negative 11 pi over 3, and in the last example we subtracted 2 pi. In this case we want to add 2 pi. But again, I've got to have common denominator. So instead of 2 pi, I'm going to add 6 pi over 3. And so when I add those two fractions, I, have I end up with a negative 5 pi over 3. Well, this is not the least positive coterminal arc because, first of all, it's still negative. So i got to add it again, 6 pi over 3, and when I add those two things up, I end up with pi over 3. So this is in quadrant 1. 
so here's let's switch to a different color here. Here's pi over um, three, kind of right there, pi over three. So somebody walked in this distance or traveled around once and again and ended up right there. Okay? You could have started, let's pick a, yet a different color, you could have started right there, walked in the positive direction, and you end up at the same spot. This is the least positive, least means smallest, least positive coterminal arc. In other words, which, uh, in the positive direction, how far do I have to travel to end up as the same spot as this? Okay, let's do one more example. We want to find the terminal arc for 14.7. Ooh, there's no pies in this. All right, let's see how we do this one. So again, here's my circle. And let's put a few things on here. 0, 2 pi, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2. That's all I need to start. Well, there's no pies in this. That's because somebody has multiplied this out using 3.14 in place of pi. So all we need to do is then convert all of our pi's into some decimal approximation. So 0, of course, is 0. 2 pi, that's 2 times 3.14, so that's 6.28. Pi, of course, is 3.14. Half of pi would be 1.57. And 3 pi over 2, you can calculate that in your calculator, 4.71. Okay, so there it is in decimal approximations. Well, the arc length is 14.7. Well, 14.7 is gr definitely greater than 6.28. So this is how we figure it out. Take your 14.7, subtract 6.28, and that gives you um, 8. 6.42, which is still greater than 6.28. So guess what? I got to subtract 6.28 again. This is like subtracting 2 pi. And now I end up with 2.14. So 2.14 is my terminal arc. But what quadrant am I in? And first of all, how do I know I don't have to subtract 6.28 again? Aha, uh -huh. because between 0 and 6.28, which is the whole distance around the circle, here's my 2.14. So my 2.14 somewhere between the start of the circle at 0 and the end of the circle at 6.28. Well, where exactly is it? It looks like it would be in quadrant 2, over here, quadrant 2, because quadrant 2 goes from 1, whoops, down here, 1.57, up to 3.14, and our 2.14 nicely fits between 1.57 and 3.14, so therefore I know that this terminates in quadrant 2. You can use a 2 or you can use double digits, that's fine. So that's an ex there's are three examples of how to find uh, terminal arcs and least positive coterminal arcs, and that's the end of this lesson.